In 1999, Disney Channel celebrated the dawn of Y2K with Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century, a movie that helped us all see the miraculous, technologically advanced society that our parents predicted for 50 years in the future, before millennials grew up and ruined everything by becoming lazy and entitled. We would be halfway to flying cars by now if we could have just learned to make our coffee drinks at home and pay for our college tuition with a part-time summer job. Xenon takes us on a fascinating adventure through a candy-colored space station filled with the most futuristic gadgets that Walmart had available at the time. But that's not all, because we also take a visit to Earth of the Future, which, spoiler alert, is more like present-day Canada, but with more 3D printed t-shirts. But let's not let that distract us from this movie's talented young cast, memorable dialogue, and unique storyline that still feels fresh over 21 years later. Although I did notice some new production quirks, plot holes, and a low-budget set design that required every ergonomic keyboard and kids calculator in North America. Cetus Lapidus, it's time for Hilarity Major in a 21st century installment of Clip Breakdown, baby. A -dee 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 -dee. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content on the web so that we can look into it like a crystal ball and say, what is in our future? Will there be fun translucent electronics or will there be climate change and destruction? Today we're breaking down Xenon Girl of the 21st Century, another classic from the late 90s on DCOM. This is another one along with Smart House which we recently covered that just defined my childhood. This was really the age when me and my siblings were able to like stay up late and watch ourselves when my parents went out. And these types of movies were just like the best things on TV at the time. And I'm still very happy with what I'm seeing. The rewatch value is high. There's still funny stuff to look at though. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on late 90s adventures like this. But more importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me when we're looking into the crystal ball to see what the future holds. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and virtual watch parties and other bonus content like that. I don't think I've ever had so much of my scalp on display <laughs> on this channel. You could raise corn on those fields. We got a movie to watch. I kind of like wearing these sunglasses. Do you guys mind if I keep them on? I thought it would be like hard to see, but they're clear. Right off the bat with Xenon, you know you're watching a high quality movie. The special effects, the lighting, the set design. Mama, we just don't get it like this anymore. Wait, where have I seen this before? Oh, yeah. Gaga's an artist, she takes inspiration from everywhere. I support that. When I first saw the Bad Romance video, it looked a little more expensive to me than it does now. Like that just looked like a bunch of tanning beds in the locker room of some gym. But honestly, iconic. All they have in the shower at my gym is wild mushrooms growing out of the drain. Right off the bat, we get that Xenon is a typical teen waking up late for school. She has this cool alarm clock where she has to pre-record her alarm message the night before, which is not really practical. I mean, I don't need to hear all that. My memory tells me what I have to do for the day. She's like, first you gotta go wake up, and then you gotta go to school. It's like, mm-hmm, yep. Time minor, task major. There's one thing to be thankful for. At least you don't live down there. Now, I know this is science fiction, so I won't get too hung up on accuracy. Although I have reimagined that scene showing how scientists actually predict the Earth will look in 2049. At least you don't live down there. Home sweet home. I love how this movie thought we would be living in space 50 years in the future. It's 21 years in now and we're still dealing with plague and famine like it's fucking biblical Egypt. Like, can we talk about climate change for a moment? We should have been like fixing this problem since the 80s, so we're a little bit behind. The cost of this unchecked climate change is going to be so high. As an earth and as a country, we're not even doing enough collectively. Like I just showed here with Xenon, climate disasters are only becoming more frequent. Just in the United States, we have these wildfires here in the West. We have these massive snowstorms in the South that really damaged Texas this year. Because it's a global challenge, we 
as a country need to think big. Right now in the United States, the Build Back Better proposal seeks to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 52% by the year 2030. Also to monitor the air quality in areas that are hardest hit by pollution so that we can divert funds to those areas that need it most and just overall invest in those communities that are affected by pollution or that depend on fossil fuel so that we can move away from this fossil fuel energy and towards clean energy. The plan is actually aiming to get us to a 100% clean energy economy with net zero emissions by the year 20. 50, so right around the time this movie, Xenon, takes place. People predict that this green job infrastructure will create up to three times more jobs than similar investments in fossil fuels. You know, like net zero emissions for our country by 2050, that would be such a better future for us than what I just showed here on Xenon land. Anyway, support the politicians in your local government who support the environment. Have I forgotten to unclip my beautiful bang? Guys, look at this. I decided to give myself a swoopy bang for this. Ooh, that looks even more 90s now, doesn't it? I look stringy and I look like the Crypt Keeper just went to a rave. <laughs> So Xenon is rushing to school and she bumps into the commander who's like, oh, he's no, 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 business, business, business. Make sure you use Oh, morning glorious, Commander Plank. Walk, Xenon. Walk. Ooh, did they not have physical education in space? Someone's gonna lose a bionic eye with that running form, Xenon. She really said, I'm not crazy! Right away, we're immersed in what school of the future looked like. This is why this movie is so iconic. I mean, I loved things that helped me picture what life would be like in the future. I wanted all of that. Space holograms, projecting, touching food that comes out of the screen. Like, that stuff fascinates me to this day. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about President Clinton, unlike her father, Bill, who also held the office at the close of the last century, President Chelsea Clinton has taken it. I'm actually impressed that it only took five decades for a woman from that family to get elected. It seems like this country would rather vote for pretty much anything else. As we saw in 2016, there could be a diseased pig with racist beliefs on the ballot and Republicans would be like, well, as long as it has a penis, it's getting my vote. One of those weird corkscrew pig penises. This is your sign not to Google what a pig penis looks like. Xenon is on the comp, as we used to call it. Do you remember in the thousands, you'd be like, I'm on my comp when you were on like AIM after school. My bang, bang maintenance is hard. Let me just clip these back for now. Keep them out of my face. So Xenon is on the comp and she's distracted by an upcoming contest with one of her favorite musicians. Xenon Carr, is there something you wish to share with the class, hmm? Yeah, I think the HDMI cable on your hologram projector is loose. We're getting a lot of static to the point where it's distracting to my education. Maybe if this school hired teachers who aren't registered sex offenders, we could get someone in the same room as us. Here's a scoop on what Xenon learned on the radio. Xenon says my group's coming. Not a giant screen performance, not a hologram. They're appearing in their lunarious, heart fluttering flesh. Me when the go-go dancers return to gay bars. As we just heard, these girls' favorite band, Microbe, is flying up to the space station and one person will be chosen to win a dance on stage with the band. Xenon's favorite character in the band is the lead singer Protozoa. But at dinner that night, the captain is talking to all of the families. My first sign that a space station would not be for me is that you have to have all of your meals cafeteria style. I'd be like, that's fine for the riffraff, but my parents are scientists who work on bone density experiments. I should have, you know, my own little suite, a captain's kitchen. Anyway, enough about me being snobby. Now, as all of you undoubtedly already know, given that gossip travels at the speed of light up here in space. <laughs> Boo, throw him out of the airlock. I hate that the captain's uniform always looks like it was just dug out of the bottom of a duffel bag. Also looking around this room, it's clear the costume designer thought that structured shoulders would be a timeless aspect of 90s fashion. Everyone's got armchair piping on their shoulders. Parker Wyndham will be paying our little space station a visit on Friday. This has not been our finest year. Our space station is 27 years old. Yikes, if we wanna keep on track to manifest Xenon's future for ourselves, we have to design and launch a space station by next year. All right, someone get me my colored pencils. And no one tweet Elon Musk about this. It's not gonna be worth it if that douchebag gets involved. So as you just heard, Parker Wyndham, their benefactor is coming and he might shut them all down if he doesn't like what he sees up there. Many of you are so close to successfully completing your most prodigious experiments. It would be a shame 
shame to have Wyndham shut us down at such a critical juncture. Well, he'll never do that because we won't let him, right? Yeah! That's not how getting fired works. I would probably not stage a mutiny if ground control can just remotely turn off your oxygen on this big floating death trap that you live on. But go off, Dad. So naturally, the whole space station is kind of buzzing. They want everything to go well. As I said, Xenon's parents work on bone density experiments, so I guess they're trying to, like, cure osteoporosis. You'd fully blow an O-ring if we had to return to Earth, huh, Mom? Ooh, I saw a guy blow out his O-ring at NYC Pride one year. It was really sad. He had to be pushed around sitting in a wheelbarrow full of ice water. Right off the bat, Xenon cannot tolerate the thought of having to live life back on Earth. She came onto this space station when she was five, unlike some of her friends who were born there. But she's heard enough about Earth to know it's not her steez. Remember when people said that? You gotta watch out for germs, speeding trucks, earthquakes, madmen, muggers. Mom's told me plenty of stories. She was in that horrible earthquake back in 35 and once she got robbed at gunpoint. Sounds like she could have just found a safer neighborhood away from any fault lines, but okay. They were like, you can't just move out of Modesto. She said, no, I have to drag my five-year-old daughter into space. I feel like that's a better journey for me. As foreshadowed on Xenon's radio in the morning, she's like all about taking her friends to see this beautiful solar flare. But of course, she can't just watch it from the window. She has to get in a spacesuit, like lace up her oxygen tube or whatever, and then jump out of the space station like she's Neil Armstrong. It blows my mind. Like how would a child even know the first thing about how to do this? Does the Apple store make spacesuits at this point? Like doesn't seem like something just anyone could figure out. She should probably have suffocated or froze to death like right away, but she doesn't. She goes out there. It's like, you know, we see some colors and she turns around and the dad's like, oh, you're in trouble. So the mom is like, oh, we're going to ground you if you get in trouble one more time because we have the commander's guest coming and blah, blah, blah. So Xenon promises to be okay, but I mean, we know what's going to happen. This really stressed me out. I'm like, this girl is really climbing out of the window of this space station to float into the ether, like she could have easily died. If I was her parent, I would be like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and chain you to your bedroom post. I'm gonna put a post in your bedroom and chain you to it. Like they did in the old days for horses. So later that night, Nebula, played by Raven Simone, yay, my favorite. She is the best friend. So anyway, Xenon and her are comparing their Kentist entries. I cannot speak very well today. <laughs> what do you think? I didn't know you could do a whole sculpture. I just did a dumb essay about what dancing with protozoa would mean to me. That might be a safer bet since your essay probably doesn't have freaky long grasshopper arms. For real though, is Xenon a professional sculptor? This is giving me celebrity deathmatch vibes, which was on MTV at the time. I want you to keep it lean, mean, and sorta of clean. Xenon loves to dig through the trash in the recycling bins to find cool materials for her sculpture. I don't know how she's not like dipping her hands in uranium and coming back out with three heads, but go for it. Naturally, her parents are the ones who are in charge of showing Mr. Wyndham around along with his associate, Mr. Lutz. Oh, is that protozoa I see? Oh yeah. You know, I happen to be quite a microscope fan myself. As a matter of fact, I'm considering coming back up for the concert next month. What's the matter, Xenon? You've never seen a facial tick before? She's like, Mr. Wyndham is an android. No, honey, that's a mini stroke. This is a serious medical emergency, not an episode of Lost in Space. So everyone on the boat of space is feeling pretty confident that Mr. Wyndham is actually a good guy. He's gonna give them the money that they need because he's so personable. As soon as I told Mr. Wyndham I love the Turbo Master movies, he started quoting all the dialogue. There's something about that guy that just fully shivers me out. The only thing that should be that smooth and oily is a propulsion module solar coil. Okay, kids, that's enough of those nonsensical futuristic similes for one day. Now run along and get those stool samples to the lab. One thing I noticed throughout this Xenon movie that stands out forever in my mind is the really complex camera work that I don't necessarily remember from some of the movies movies that come in later years off Disney Channel. I just get the very creepy feeling that something just doesn't quite fit. Sorry, Z, but every time you get one of these feelings, it always ends up in disaster major. Raven said, I can find my mark on the floor or I can say my line at the correct time. You're not getting both. The director said, that's okay, I'm cool with an awkward silence. Something just doesn't quite fit. Sorry, Z, but every time you get- Honestly, we just need to let Raven act however Raven wants to act. Hadn't she suffered enough at this point by having to work with Bill Cosby? So that night, while about to jump into the 
the shoot of laundry, Xenon runs into Mr. Lutz, that kind of weaselly guy with the glasses who's always around Wyndham. He's about to go into a restricted area, but Xenon's like, well, that's restricted. So she kind of shoos him away. But because she's been up all night sneaking, she's a little drowsy at school the next day. For thousands of years, regular polyhedrons have been a source of great fascination, <laughs> specific laws. Regular polyhedrons have been a source. Sorry about your narcolepsy, but I think your hologram teacher is having yet another glitch because he's repeating his words exactly at the beginning and the end of the scene. A thousand years. Regular polyhedrons have been a source. Of course, we're not supposed to notice this in the audience. They just probably originally shot it so that it was silent when Raven would look down. So they just pulled some of the teacher's dialogue from the beginning of the scene, hoping that nobody would remember that it already was used. But that inflection of it, I was just like, wait, he's already said that. Maybe you notice it too. And maybe this butterfly will clamp onto my eyebrow nicely. Maybe, just maybe. Ow! No, nope, it bit me. That night, it's time to find out who won the dance on stage with Protozoa! Who do you think it's gonna be? I have one guess. 13 year old Xenon Carr! I won? Congratulations, Xenon. I can't wait to get up oh, there to close. meet you. Actually, seeing that sculpture up close, I can tell it was made by a child. Those derpy eyes and teeth make it look like he's been chewing on scraps of wood from the lead paint days. Xenon is sure that Lutz is up to something since she caught him snooping around that restricted area. So she speaks to her friend whose dad has access codes to those areas and writes down the info on her hand. And that night she uses the vents to see that Dr. Lutz, or whatever his name is, is in the restricted area and put something on a disc or put something from a disc onto the computer in there. But when Xenon tries to access it herself, the code on the hand has become smeared because she's an idiot and didn't write it in permanent marker. So she can't get in to see what's up. Ew, I hate that out of focus close up on his hand. I was about to start looking for my trusty ocular discharge rag. Hey, I sound just like Xenon. Totally lunarious, my eyes are leaking pus. While trying to enter codes that she doesn't know, she sets off the alarm of accessing the restricted area, which obviously gets her into trouble with the commander. Nobody's believing her story that Lutz would do something or be in there. They think she's just completely making it up. My first thought is why are there no cameras on this space station? Like even Walmart had security cameras in 1999, but whatever. Because of this security breach, Xenon finally gets the punishment she's been being threatened with. Your mother and I have contacted your Aunt Judy. She hates space. You don't get it, see? We're really grounding you. That's right, you'll be ground into mince protein chunks that will feed the good people of Earth. And the first step is your acid bath. Run along now. Honestly, she should be taken off of this space station. I know she saw something that was actually like secretly bad, but it's irresponsible to be stealing spacesuits and going out of the airlock. Like she could have compromised the safety of the whole ship. She's a liability to this multi, I assume, billion dollar operation. At some point, the commander's like, we've got the $27 million we need. Like, um, is this 2049 without inflation? Nebula, Xenon's best friend, is obviously bumming that she's gonna lose her friend. So she makes an earring for her out of something she happened to find. All of the personnel, that's possible. It's for good luck. Here. Uh, I can't really see it when you're twirling it in conspicuous circles like that. Computer, can we get a motor function test for Nebula? She's acting weird. This is actually something I'm familiar with. By shooting a lot of beauty commercials, you do a lot of hand close-ups where you're like, I'm gonna show a hero shot of the product. You want it to really catch the light, so you ask the actor to do like a little bit of natural movement. Like, if I was doing a hand close-up of this, I would be like, like, just give it a little bit of dancing in the light so you can show some dimensionality to it. But I've also directed people where I'm like, okay, can you give me a little motion? just some natural hand motion on the product. And they're like, mm-hmm, no problem. And I'm like, girl, you're not stirring coffee. So after all, Xenon finally has to get on her space shuttle back to Earth. The punishment is so real. Not that iPhone alarm sound that used to wake me up hungover for my makeup counter job. Why did I want to be ripped back to consciousness every day with the stress of my U-boat being hit by a German missile? Upon arriving at Earth, Xenon is like, oh, the gravity here is so much heavier, my bags hurt. And when she's telling off Lutz, she's like, I don't trust you guys. She turns and Lutz sees that disc earring on her ear and you can see on his face, he's like, oh no, my disc that I lost is right there. But it doesn't matter because Xenon is off and she meets her Aunt Judy. 
Kate, who's going to be her caretaker on Earth. I love that there's no like kind of end date for how long she's gonna be on Earth. Her parents are like, well, you messed up, so fuck off forever. Like, is it for a few weeks? Is it till after the concert? We don't know. Anyway, let's meet Judy. She's like the polar opposite of Xenon in some ways. I would rather face 62 weeks of dental surgery. Terra firma, that's my motto. The firma the better. The firma the better. Tell that to my rock hard prostate, Linda. Although that is fun wordplay that I did not catch as a child because I did not speak Latin at the time or now. Lutz is running all around this futuristic society looking for Xenon, clearly after that disc on her ear. And we get one little cool wide shot of their futuristic activities. There's a hover boat. It looks like instead of tennis, people just take a pool floaty and whack beach balls at one another. These are just summer activities, toys, that they put in a different context and we're like, that's the future. A lot of home goods decorations. I love it. Pizza, burgers. I've never had any of it. Our food is hydroponically grown. No dirt, no preservatives, no artificial coloring. Wow. Put that much purity into my system, I'd be dead in 24 hours. You'd be dead from not eating dirt or food coloring for one day? Damn, Aunt Judy, I didn't know being quirky could alter your body chemistry like that. Is that how Lena Dunham got more annoying over time? If you've noticed that the area that they're in right now on Earth doesn't seem that different from present day British Columbia or I, maybe Vancouver, I don't know, let me know Canadians, where is this? I know it might be one of the two areas, but couldn't say. If it doesn't look too futuristic to you, there's a reason. It's like some time warped village supreme. That's part of its appearance. All those overhead monorails and high-rise megaliths in towns like New York and LA. Here, we just let progress take its sweet time. What, so you have like segregated drinking fountains? What the hell? Who wants progress to take its time? That just makes bad things happen longer. Also, the director told Greg to be intrigued by Xenon from the other table, and he did that by staring at her unblinkingly for 10 minutes. He's like, mm -hmm. like, focus on your chicken fingers, dude. There's a little bit of a love at first sight feeling here. Solve me from interrupting, but my pack and I have a bet. They think that with those clothes, you must be from some viral extreme place like Eastern Jersey. Oof, Jersey can't even catch a break in 2049? How come Earth kids have different fashion sense than space kids when they all consume the same pop culture and media? It doesn't matter. I just want to thank this jealous girl for opening the door for me to say, absolve me from interrupting. Being precocious like rough draft Dakota Fanning is not gonna hide your insecurities, Margie. It's just a tip. You know, the fact that some areas might progress at different speeds than others is another area of climate change that we need to focus on as Americans, I believe. A lot of times transportation investments divide communities along like socioeconomic lines, like the Claiborne Expressway in New Orleans or the I-81 in Syracuse, or those investments leave out the people that are most in need of affordable transportation options. The Build Back Better plan that I mentioned earlier includes $20 billion that would go towards a new program that would help reconnect neighborhoods that were cut off by historic investments. And it would help make sure that all new projects help increase opportunity, advance racial equity, and improve access for all members of the community. After this rude spat with Margie, Xenon and her aunt just leave. And Xenon is like, oh yeah, I guess I do remember things that everyone would remember because the internet exists. Our hydroponic chambers are for producing oxygen, but we've got plenty of that. Oh, not everything has to have a purpose, hon. Huh? Some things just good for your soul. Okay, so far we know Aunt Judy hates space, but loves to smoke pot. She said, come to think of it, what was that you said about hydroponics up there? Did you bring any diagrams of that setup? We get a little bit more detail on Judy. I think it's nice that they build out all these characters. People feel very dimensional. How come you've never gotten married or had any kids? Well, first of all, bitch. I had to keep a spare bedroom open here in case your parents ever got tired of your spandex wearing ass. Second of all, don't worry about my personal life when you can't stop climbing out of space station and jumping into trash chutes for fun. Who are you, that raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy? The next day, we get a feel for what Earth school is like. Hey. So I think that's the cultural appropriation alarm going off on this girl's highly Asian back. Also, movie scenes are instantly ruined for me when I can see the shadow of the camera operator on one of the actors. Later on in the day, Xenon's fish out of water routine becomes more of a fish in water routine. Margie, how does it feel to be the most toxic middle schooler on Earth or any of its orbiting space stations? Tell me. Why are you drowning Xenon like you're the bad seed when it's Greg who can't stop looking at her? Women not supporting women? That's not the future we need to build, so we reverse drown you. More physical comedy. Ah! Ah! 
I heated it to 250 degrees Celsius. Down here, we're still using Fahrenheit. So sorry, Miss Winnipeg, but that kind of seems like something you should have put on the instructions of your scientific experiment. And it's not like the entire world uses Fahrenheit. This joke literally only works for the United States audiences. And most of us are too stupid to get it. She had to be like, so you made it twice as hot? I didn't get it. I was like, what's Celsius when I was a kid? I think that this movie, they use the screen time appropriately to show like, oh, she's really having a rough day. Things are different down here. We get what we need to see to know like how she's struggling. Where she comes from, they don't have cash. Yeah, we just barter with moon rocks and alien skulls. You know, the truth is, I think it's pretty macro you grew up in space. Yeah? Can we get some double-sided tape for Xenon's lunch tray? She can't be wrangling oranges while trying to avoid Greg's gaze. But also, girl, you're gonna be hungry in two hours if you eat that for lunch. Can we add like a hard-boiled egg or something? That day after school, Aunt Judy's house has been torn apart, but weirdly, nothing has been stolen. I don't buy this random break-in stuff. It was Lutz and Wyndham. What would they be looking for? It's as much a mystery to me in the audience. The truth just cannot be made clear. The movie is totally like, what could it be, kids? Why did Let's turn every picture in this house askew looking for something that Xenon didn't even know was important enough to hide? And also that they've only ever seen dangling from her ear. If that little disc was going to expose my felonies, the first time I saw it, I would have been like, oh, cool earring, is that a clip-on? Yoink! I'd be halfway across the city getting rid of that evidence with the chunk of earlobe still stuck on it like cooked macaroni. Oh, I made it gross, sorry. Earlobe chunk. This part got me thinking, maybe the movie would be enhanced if they kept that disc a mystery from even us in the audience. Like, what if we just knew that, oh, she found this disc, we didn't know what Lutz had lost until it had been revealed to us later. That way we're like, why is Lutz looking at her? Why is he chasing her? What does he want from her? Maybe we think it's cause he saw her down in the chamber and they could write it in. Although I guess as a kid it was effective. You know, you don't wanna hide the plot from the kids, so. So at some point, Greg invites Xenon to come to the stables and he's like, oh, you can see the horses. And she's like, oh, real horses? By the way, this child actor who plays Greg, his real name is also Greg something, and he played Sport in Harriet the Spy. He played the boy in Small Soldiers. He was in a lot of movies at the time. But anyway, it's so beautiful watching them during this romantic horse ride scene. <sighs> Oh, is it over? Great. Everyone wants to see them brush a horse for five minutes. Like what? I have always loved this restaurant scene. The food looks so good to me. <laughs> Slow down. I said I'd buy you dinner, not 10 dinners. It all tastes so fully illegal. Considering how many horses I'm gonna have to groom to pay for tonight, I'm glad to know you're loving it. I am. You can prove it to me by swallowing the food in your mouth before you say another word. Also, I could do without all the financial guilt tripping, Greg. Groom all the horses you have to if you want me as your dining companion. You're lucky I don't ask you to shoot one of those horses and fry it up for me like these onion rings, cause you know you do it. You do it in a second, Mr. Looks at me in a bathing suit. She is that bitch. Xenon is that bitch. Down at the water, another thing Xenon has never really experienced. Craig is, Craig is, Greg is, Craig is Greg, and he's breaking in <laughs> to the big. What'd you uncover? A secret financial forms, confidential memos. You hacked your way into their internal data bank? Without breaking a sweat. But not without breaking several cybersecurity laws, you little felon. And we're gonna try you as an adult, cause you could accomplish that 90s center part that every male child actor had, which I could never get my hair to do. I used to practice combing my hair like that in the bathroom. Hollywood straight up had me looking like George from Spring Awakening, because this is so much better. I'm starting to get a little confused about what Xenon does and doesn't know about Earth. What's that? What's happening? Xenon, it's okay. It's just rain. Xenon, did your school jump right to teaching you about the Clinton family and US politics before ever covering like the weather down there? Or maybe her reading retention is just very, very low. I don't know. She does sleep in class a lot. Next, Greg's computer geek friend is helping them look at that disc to figure out what's on it. Margie continues to be trying it with me. My business is keeping you away from Gregory. He's only helping me with a problem major. That better be all, or I'll sprint to that view phone and tell those microbe folks that they need to pick a replacement. Girl, my whole family is going to employ and you're here talking to me about a contest while wearing pelts of Muppet skin. Why so tacky? I've never wanted a child's vocal cords to be cut before, but Margie's pushing me in that direction. That night, the kid who is just a supporting character, like all people of color in this movie, uncovers the danger of this virus that's on the disc. Oh, no. 
We love a movie computer virus that is mostly just flash animation. Thanks for leading the way, Jurassic Park. Ah, 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 you didn't say the magic word. Ah, 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 you didn't say the magic word. So the next day, that kid is like, Xenon, this virus is gonna tear apart your whole space station from the inside out. It's gonna get inside that space station's guts and just start kicking holes in its colon. It's gonna drag its nails through the chalkboards. But it's just taking a while because the computer system is more advanced. So Xenon gets on a call with her parents who are trying to act all cool, but in reality, she's right. The space station is starting to break down. The lights are flashing. There's beeping happening everywhere. You can tell things are hectic. So Xenon finally gets to meet face to face with Lutz and she knows what's up. And she's trying to barter her way back to the space station so she can help. Because the nerdy kid was like, don't worry, I created an uninstall file that will just instantly remove this virus, which is like, okay, seems easy enough. Thank you. He should get a job at Staples. He's like gonna help a lot of people. So anyway, let's and Xenon meet. I'll be happy with a ride home. I give you a lift and you give me the desk? Instantly. Wait, write it, sign it. Mm, good thinking, Greg. These people who are willing to commit murder for insurance fraud are no match for your handwritten contract. Also, if Lutz knows the space station is going to explode, wouldn't he want Xenon to be back up there to like kill all the survivors or witnesses and stuff? No one can point any fingers if they're floating around as frozen chunks of meat in the atmosphere. When that space station explodes and everyone Xenon knows and loves is raining down, it's gonna look like a beautiful meteor shower. So there's that. So yeah, Lutz should want to send Xenon back up to space to explode, and then Greg, he could, I don't know, try drowning him or something? I'm not good with kids. But being a trusting young woman, Xenon hands over the disc before she's on the space plane, and Lutz is like, oops, I lied, Bye bye So Xenon's like, darn it, but she knows what's up. This hair is driving me crazy. I said I gave him a disc. With my ingenuity major, we can have as many rainbow discs as we need. <laughs> All right. Ooh, she's got that real holographic nail polish that that Canadian YouTuber Simply Nail Logical is always talking about. Ugh, why did making that reference just immediately suck all the funny out of the room? I won't do that again. So Let's puts his disc in and he gets a jack in the box of Xenon being like, and I was like, when do they have time to get a digital camera out and take these pictures to be like, this will be a funny joke. Like what is going on here? I've said in the past, I consider this 1999 to 2000 to be the first golden age of Disney Channel original movies followed later in the thousands by, you know, the like High School Musical original music era, which I would consider to be the second golden age. The first one, the scripts are always very solid. I feel like there's tons of character development. The structure is right. There's plenty of detail. The world building feels really real for the low budget. So a lot of the plot holes just come from this fictional back stuff. Despite her communication blocker, Xenon is able to get in touch with Nebulon on the space station. I can't get into all the inky details, but I was right about Wyndham. Put this gunkball nanovirus in your computers. We tried uploading the undo disc from here. Raven just earned her whole paycheck with that reaction shot. That's me when they're out of cake pops in the Starbucks app. Even as a kid, I recognize these little handheld screens that they're communicating on as these mini VHS monitors that I saw for sale in the back of my video maker magazines. They did not have wireless capabilities. You had to plug an RCA cable into them. So whenever you see an image on the screen, you always see that they're hiding the cable under somebody's wrist or behind their shoulder. You can even see flesh colored tape covering the cord on Raven's hand during this shot. In fact, a lot of the set dressing you'll see around here, you're like, oh, so that's just like a Toshiba monitor. They got a lot of those clipboards that are like funky shaped or that mouse that had a big red ball here because it looked kind of futuristic. Honestly, I love it because it highlights how this movie was so effective for a pretty low budget. Like that's the kind of creative stuff I love about low budget filmmaking is like, oh yeah, you made it look really effective. For the time, like we were like, oh yeah, it works. Looking back on it though, it's kind of like, ooh, it just perfectly captures captures what our outdated electronics look like at the time. They were just using existing electronics to save money. Xenon sends a message to Aunt Judy that she has to go back to the space station to save everyone. So Judy starts chasing her. Meanwhile, the kids are all over town. <laughs> What kind of board game is this? That kid's dad is like, has anyone seen my rotating dildo? The one with all the hard edges? Back on the ship, Nebula and the space nerd one, there's like a corresponding nerd kid on each atmosphere. She gets the access code for Xenon that she'll need when she gets back into the space station to save everyone and uninstall this whole thing. So the kids start racing towards the last cargo ship to go to the space station that Xenon needs to be on. Margie, still bugging. Follow the reality pill. 
Read my flapping lips. I will never be your boyfriend. Uh, is this negotiable? Maybe I caught you at a bad time. Yeah, let's circle back next lifetime, desperate Bedelia. If you're begging guys to be with you at age 13, then I do not want to be at the first party you're at where you have three Smirnoff Ices. Like, I've never loved anyone like I love him, but it doesn't love me. If you're wondering how these 13 year olds are about to drive a car, I'll tell you. What's to know? As long as you've got the ignition code and, and a departure and destination point, supposedly my dad keeps his puppy program to do all the rest. Supposedly? Another empty promise of self-driving cars. Listen, Elon Musk, if I'm gonna be hurled off a cliff in a flaming sedan, it's gonna be due to my own ineptitude, not your cheap ass artificial intelligence. Let's move on from self-driving cars and just focus on electric vehicles for now, cause that'll help the environment. Right now in the US, our market market share of making electric vehicles is one third of what China's is. So there's plenty of room for us to make more jobs in electric vehicles. The Build Back Better plan invests $174 million towards making us like the world leader in electric vehicles. But if you're a US citizen, I think the best part will be like tax incentives for us to switch over to electric vehicles or rebates when we buy American made electric vehicles. Those things will all help us get like all of these fossil fuel burning cars off the road. The plan is also to electrify 20% of our yellow bus fleets in the country, which would be a great start. Replace 50,000 diesel transit vehicles and create a network of 500,000 electronic vehicle chargers by 2030. All of that comes with jobs that will help, you know, promote safe installation and training and regulation for all of those things. I'm mentioning it because there are times when I'm recycling and trying to reduce my carbon footprint where I'm like, is this even gonna matter? Does it even matter? And it does, it does. I don't want to discourage that, but it gave me a lot of hope to see that there are plans from this government, at least finally after a while, that feel comprehensive in terms of like getting us to be world leaders in clean energy, like we have the economy to do, which I think, you know, once the United States can set a standard for being really clean energy in terms of like our economy, the rest of the world is gonna be able to follow suit and we can maybe save this planet. So anyway, vote for people that are gonna do green energy. That's what I recommend. It doesn't matter for Zena though because she hasn't been born yet in this situation and she just missed the last cargo ship to the space station so her whole family's gonna die. I didn't mean to laugh while I said that. I'm just getting excited. Everybody up there will be finished. But wouldn't it be viral if the explosion happens while microbes there? What did you say? I wasn't trying to be cruel. Oh, then probably just don't say that thought out loud. The cruelty doesn't necessarily come from having the thought, as much as it comes from you voicing it in front of the girl whose parents are dying. But of course Xenon has a plan. This Margie comment actually makes her remember, oh, right, Protozoa's going to the space station. I can bum a ride with him. So the next day they have to break into that sort of going away party he's having. Sorry, Chief. Love to hang around, but got a rocket. <laughs> It was at this point in rewatching the movie that I realized just how invested I was. I started jumping around the house being like, yes, Xenon smash that glass. Yes, Xenon smash that glass. Until I was out of breath. So it took about five seconds because it's really hot outside. I mean, I have air conditioning, but still got tired. Xenon is able to gain access to Protozoa and she's like, I'm the winner, I'm the winner. You have to take me to the stars. Sorry about this, Mr. Zoa. We'll get her out of here at once. Wait, his full legal name is Protozoa, as in Zoa comma Prota? What is up with names in the the future. Karen went extinct in 2021, so they had to start freestyling new ones from the science textbooks. Disney Channel loves giving their lead kids unusual names, so you know they had a field day with this one. The first draft of this script was probably like, we fade in on our spunky main character, Chunka Wonka Tonka Monka. Later they're like, I guess Xenon. Xenon sounds cool too. Actually, I lied. This movie is based on a novel of the same name, Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. If you want to read the book version, go ahead. I don't. Xenon is able to be like, Look, I put my picture on this little sculpture so you know I'm the one who sent it. I'm going? You're taking me with you? Like See, it's the penis! As much as I loved you before, now I love you even more. Of course she does. So just checking, the international rock star is transporting an unsupervised minor into space without any questions or safety checks. From the looks of it, we pretty much lost the handle on human trafficking when space tourism was invented. I shudder to think how many holographic missing posters this society has to print. In the future, they all look like the cover of a Guinness Book of World Records for some reason. They're like, missing. So Xenon is getting getting onto the ship, thank goodness, while when 
Kingdom and Lutz are talking about their plan. Sending such a popular group up to the space station hours before it's going to self-destruct. A perfect smoke screen to keep any fingers from ever being pointed at you. Wait, what? You think just because a celebrity was on board, they won't investigate the cause of the fatal accident? This secret plan feels a little messy, especially since you're talking about it in full voice in front of this Canadian concert hall. Right before the ship takes off, they see Xenon getting on the ship. That includes Aunt Judy. <laughs> Not that weedle waddle pollywog walk, what? I've said it before as part of my college thesis, but the pelvis movements that men make in Disney movies are turning children gay. So we need more of it. Quick, someone call Kenny Ortega. And Judy, who's looking for Xenon, along with Lutz and Wyndham, jump on to the space shuttle in the nick of time. And Xenon's like, uh-oh, gotta think fast. <laughs> Xenon, that was the trash compactor, and it's really hard to clean guts out of it. Just ask anyone at the airline who has had to scrape a fellow intern out of there. Back on the space station, things are hitting critical mass. Conlink's reporting that the shuttle carrying microbe will be arriving within the hour. Mama, the whole artificial planet that's keeping you alive right now needs to be taken for an appointment at the Apple Genius Bar, and no one thought to cancel this big concert? What was the event coordinator thinking? What's that? Oh, they burned to death in their sleep pod? Okay then. The space shuttle arrives on the space station right amidst the chaos, and everyone gets to work trying to sort this out. Take Xenon and her aunt to my office, no. see that they no, stay they there. On your I need oh, emergency me. refueling. I have to leave immediately. I Fine. Yes, you do. I'm gonna take a quick break now just to go have motion sickness. Ooh, let me order a veggie burger and fries for after. It always makes me feel like a Roman emperor. I love this long shot they do where Xenon is talking and they're rotating in this consistent circle. It's more complex camera work than we usually see later on in Disney Channel movies. Shots like this are expensive because they take so much time to choreograph all of the actors and then choreograph the cameras, lighting it so that you don't see any visible light and then you always almost have to re-record all of the dialogue because you can hear the director shouting stage directions. It's a real budget suck, so it's really cool that they're able to do it here and show off that they built a 360 degree space shuttle set. I think these are the reasons why, even though looking at it now, I'm like, oh yeah, it had kind of a low budget like other movies at the time. They did really good work with that budget. So it's like, this is why the movie stuck out in my memory so long, I think. Meanwhile, Wyndham is like, I gotta get off this space shuttle because it's about to explode. I was not planning to be here for it. <laughs> Does this guy think he's gonna pilot a spaceship back to Earth with no training? Honestly, let him try. This movie is severely lacking anyone getting throttled into the sun. Xenon gets the disc with the undo file in the main access code, and she's trying to explain this all to their parents and the commander, but she has to get the access code in. Incorrect access code. I know this. I can do this. When I'm had left to plant this virus in our computer so me can collect the insurance money. Incorrect access. Do you remember the access code or not? She's like, just give me a minute. I'm gonna try every possible combination of letters and numbers. It'll only take me 62,000 years. But of course, right before all of the power shuts down and all of these little go spinning out to the stars, Xenon gets the undo file in and the world is saved. Space station rewarded. We finally made it and we can breathe and enjoy that concert with our protozoa band and microbe. You hit me like a cosmic blast. You're giving me a technicolor world. Make my heart go a supernova girl. Zoom, 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 you make my heart go boom, boom, my supernova girl. Breathing in, you give me air, I'm living off your solar flare. Could you be my supernova girl? Zoom, 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 you make my heart go boom, boom, my supernova girl. Because she's such a good friend, Xenon gives the prize of dancing on stage to Nebula, her best friend, and she says goodbye to her beau back home. Girl, zoom, zoom, zoom. make my heart go boom, boom. Supernova. Is Greg calling you from prison? He looks miserable. The FBI was like, we still don't love that you can apparently hack our nuclear codes while sitting on a beach. Into the ice chamber like Mr. Freeze. And that's all she wrote for Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. What's my hair gonna look like when I remove these? Just spiky? Ooh. What did you guys think of this awesome movie? I think it holds up remarkably well. It's fun to look at the low budget aspects of it though, and a couple of the plot holes from the futurism of it all. But let me know
know your thoughts and what else I should cover next. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on decom videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm sending you on a planetary whirl. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for making my heart go boom, boom. I will see you next time.